Yeah, you can. Well, but you, you, when I'm preparing the, the slides, I have access. So then I can download them and have them in the hard drive. Okay, so sorry for the delay. Now we're back online. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, personal protective equipment today. And I don't know about the signs, signals, and barricades because uh, to complement that uh, topic, I had several videos that are related to that. And since we have no internet access, I don't think we can go ahead and do that. Also, I wanted to do something different today in terms of the homework. But since I have no way to access the homework, then we cannot do that. So we'll do it next time. OK, very good. So we want uh, the employers to be uh, aware of the hazards that we have on the job site and then provide employees with uh, personal protective equipment. So we're going to look at the different uh, hazards that there could be on the job site and how to protect ourselves from those hazards using personal protective equipment. So the objectives uh, here is to provide two primary means of protecting employees from hazards on the job site uh, before we consider the use of the personal protective equipment. Let's see. Uh, I don't think this will work, but let me try it anyway. No. Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay, so uh, personal protective equipment is uh, covered under OSHA in subpart E, and they have uh, several uh, guidelines as to where to use them, how to use them, training that people need to have in order to use uh, personal protective equipment, and so on. So employers have to provide employees from, uh, uh, you know, provide means to prevent accidents and to prevent uh, getting harm. So they have to look at what are the feasible ways that you can put practices, engineering practices by design into the job site to make them safe. If that doesn't work, then uh, go ahead and uh, implement personal protective equipment, but that should be the last uh, level of control that you implement. Anyone knows what would be a uh, engineered way to reduce hazards? Mm -hmm. Standard operating procedures. That uh, should be inside them. Yes. Any specific uh, way to engineer the job or uh, mm? guardrails? There you go. So that's an engineered way to protect the employee from getting harmed just by having guardrails in the uh, equipment. So if the work environment can be physically changed to prevent an employee from getting exposed to a hazard, then the hazard can be eliminated with an engineering control. So you can change the work, the environment, or the procedure to reduce the hazard. So engineering controls is basically change the machine or the work environment uh, to create a safer um, environment. For example, change the design specifications, use a less uh, harmful material, change the process, um, you know, insulate uh, parts that may be harmful or uh, by using guards and so on. If employees can change the way that they do their jobs, uh, then they can eliminate the hazard by changing the work practice, right? Uh, and then that will reduce the, the potential accidents at the job site. So there are several methods that we could uh, implement. A wet method, housekeeping and maintenance, personal hygiene, ro job rotation, those are ways to control uh, the job site in order to reduce harm. I had a uh, link to, I think I presented that document before, the silica dust when we were talking about silica as a hazard. And that talked about the West Method where we have 
you know, water coming into the soil to prevent the dust uh, going up and, uh, and, and, you know, creating a hazard. Now, during the visit at uh, Berry University, they talked about another method to reduce dust. Anyone remembers that, what it is? One, one person, lift your hand. Everybody wants to talk to now and no one? Okay, go ahead. No, it was for, for dust, regular dust, yeah. Right, it was some sort of materials, right, that they, it's a green material, this guy was saying, that they put on the floor, and then when you swipe the floor, it will not uh, create that much dust, right? Anyone familiar with that? Yes, you are? Okay, sweeping compound. You have used that before? Yeah. yeah. How does it work? Just it's just like it's almost just like um, sawdust, really. And you they dampen it a little bit and you just spread it out on the floor. You sweep it all up like with whatever, whatever trash or dust you're sweeping. It helps not to like the dust go everywhere. Okay. Very good. Thanks for the uh, the comment. Uh, now there was a, a a problem with that also, you know, a, a backdrop, if you will. If it gets water, then it will stain the floors with a green color. Okay, very good. So employer, it's responsible to provide you know personal protective equipment to the employees, uh, determine when to use, train employees in how to use them, and then the employee. It's also responsible to use their personal protective equipment in the way that it's been trained, inspect uh, daily, make sure that it's uh, working properly, that there's no dents, there's no uh, uh, visible, you know, uh, defects in the equipment that may, may, may in some way reduce the capacity of the uh, PPE to prevent um, injury. So here we have different body parts and then the type of protection that uh, can be provided for the eyes, uh, safety glasses, goggles, the face shields for the face, uh, hard hats for the head. We talked about those uh, before. Safety shoes for feet, gloves and uh, for the hands. There could be complete vests that protect the body and, uh, and the um, uh, clothing. Ear plugs and ear muffs for hearing. Anyone uses this uh, on a daily basis? You do? What? Hard hats, okay. And safety glasses, yes. something, whether we're through the grinder or a bandsaw or anything like that, anything that causes sparks. They give you ear plugs. These are a lot of mason workers wear the ear plugs, especially with a lot of dust and stuff. Okay. Um, That's what you want to use. You got to wear like, a, like the different guys directing traffic and stuff for deliveries on the site. You got to wear a vest okay. if you're out in the road directing traffic. Is everybody familiar with how the uh, earplugs uh, look like and the earmuffs and all these equipment? Yeah. Okay, if you ever go to a, a, a shooting range, they will recommend that you use both the earplugs inside your ears and then to put on top of that the earmuff because the, the noise is uh, higher than the protection that you can get with uh, only one of those. So that's a note on the safety side and uh, shooting. So employers and uh, companies should have in place a personal protective equipment program in which they explain where are the hazards on the job site, what personal protective equipment you should use and how to use it. Then, you know, provide training to the employees so they can uh, use that uh, accordingly. 
during the training, you have to explain, you know, why it's necessary to use personal protective equipment, how to protect, um, how that will protect you, uh, when to wear it, how to wear it, to identify signs of wear, you know, if the equipment is not longer uh, producing their uh, protective um, function, then it should be discarded and uh, replaced. Uh, how to be disposed is uh, also important. Head protection, we talked about the hard hats before, uh, you know, protecting from uh, falling objects, bumping your head against an object or pipes or even contact with electrical uh, components that can cause a shock. We talked about the right type of hat, right? The uh, type uh, class A, class B, class C, uh, and what uh, their um, uses are. Class C, we said that's uh, designed for. And there it goes, our uh, back on plan number five already, right? <laughs> Huh? What? You just teach yourself. Yeah, teach yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah? Let's wait until that thing works again. The computer is on, so it's just a matter of the, uh, the, uh, um, <laughs> Okay, you can reset the, uh, the computer is working, the, the, oh, there it is, it's, light is coming up. All right. Hopefully it will not uh, get damaged. There you go. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, so we talked about the hard hats before and the different classes, you know, why they, uh, how they protect you. Huh? Sure, absolutely. Not a problem. Class A is general service. They give you uh, good impact protection, but not so much. Voltage protection. Then the class B gives you um, electrical protection. It, it protects you against uh, high voltage. And then the class C, which is more for comfort, it gives uh, limited protection and it does not have uh, any kind of protection against uh, electrical shock. Some of those are even conductive. They are uh, metal type of uh, hats, so they're not designed to protect you against uh, electrical shock. Both, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we saw also the type 1 and type 2, where they have type 1 is the ones that can uh, sustain um, falls from the top, and then the class 2 from the sides also. Yep. So what's the point of class C? Class C is more, I mean, it will give you some limited protection, but it looks cool. Yeah. Some people use it. Before it was very, uh, very um, fashion to have these leather type of uh, helmets. But they won't protect much, so you know it's just uh, fashion. <laughs> right. Okay, so there is a uh, ANSI standard also that um, that regulates the the quality uh, of the hard hats and how to test them and so on and so forth. You uh, may want to go and look at those uh, standards so you get a little bit more familiar with the uh, hard hats. But basically, you know, the important thing to get out of here is that there are different types and they will give you different type of protections. The A, B, and C class, that's uh, kind of important. 
So the employers have to make sure that people are wearing their hard hats. You know, some companies will have a policy they will not let you into the job site if you don't have your hard hat. So that's part of their uh, uh, PPE plans. No luck with the internet? Okay. Uh, remove the hard hat from service if you see that they are uh, they, they have signs of deterioration. They no longer hold the shell. You know, the suspension system does not work. Or if they have been exposed to uh, shocks or heat or, or some, um, you know, if it is cracked or whatever, don't, uh, don't wear them anymore. You know, remove them from service. If you see that, uh, if you use some paints or paint removals on it, it may change the... Uh, the, 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 the material on the, on the hard hat itself, so then it may not provide the good protection. So try to avoid uh, use paint thinners and that kind of things on the hard hats. Uh, eye protection, uh, we've talked briefly about the face shield, uh, goggles, and, and glasses. Sometimes it's important to wear them both. Uh, because the face shield itself will not give you full protection against uh, getting a, a, a small particle flying in into your eye. So sometimes it's good to have uh, both of them uh, in place. Okay, so now you can participate a little bit, at least here. You know, what contributes to eye injuries at work? Yep. Flying objects. What else? Dust. Okay. Hmm? Cutting wood. So flying objects. What else? Chemicals. Chemicals. Yep. Very good. Those are uh, uh, items that can provide, you know, injuries at work. So wearing wearing the wrong kind of uh, eye protection can also uh, take you to a, a, a injury. What causes an injury? We talked about that. Flying particles contact with chemicals and so on. And uh, where do these accidents occur uh, more often? Well, on the job side, but, you know, around saws, around, you know, if you're, you're um, carpenters or plumbers where you have, you know, saws, you have, you, you have uh, welding operations going on, that uh, sanders, those are uh, places where you can get injured uh, and have a, uh, I injured specifically. <clears throat> so whenever we have these kind of uh, hazards, we should use uh, eye protection, face protection, you know, especially for welding and uh, use of lasers that can damage your, your eye. I had some videos on, on the site that uh, show how lenses can protect you from uh, lasers and that kind of thing. So I encourage you to watch them. There is a uh, OSHA publication 3151. It's uh, also on the website. It talks about the uh, different type of uh, eye protection um, in, in, and how to use them. Procedures to clean and disinfect are important, you know. And you have to make sure that it does not interfere with other uh, type of protection. So look at those uh, publications. That's uh, important. Prescription glasses are not the right type of uh, protective uh, eye uh, equipment. So sometimes you have to wear goggles on top of the, your uh, glass protection. Sometimes people will let you go in with just uh, regular glasses. But... It may, it may become uh, a hazard. It may become uh, a hazard on the job site that will prevent, that will make, um, you know, that will make you uh, sick or, or lose eyesight. I was standing one time with several people looking at the machinery, and then a hose uh, broke loose and it uh, starts spraying a uh, chemical that was used to clean the stainless steel in some tanks. So, you know, we got 
um, it, it was good that no one got eye injured, but we got, you know, all wet with this chemical. It could have uh, heat an eye and uh, cause the problem. So, you know, those kind of uh, goggles, you, you need to wear them whenever you might get in contact with uh, chemicals. Here's some pictures of uh, safety glasses. You know, they're, uh, they're designed to protect your eye uh, on the sides as well. But of course, they will not protect you if, uh, if a nail flies by, you know, that, that may, be, uh, may have the power enough to break one of those glasses. But that, that's, uh, you know, you have to try to protect yourself uh, as much as you can. Here we have uh, welding uh, face masks uh, that are uh, used uh, to protect workers while they are doing welding. There are different fashions, different types. Uh, face shield, sometimes it does not protect you from impact. Uh, I said that before, so you should wear goggles or glasses underneath them. Here's some uh, welding shields, also how they looked. Um, how they can protect you from the uh, lights, uh, the high intensity lights that are generated when you're doing welding. Hearing protection is also important. Uh, you know, there is uh, uh, an average um, for each one of the crafts in uh, construction, and we see they're all above the 85 decibel. Uh, level that can cause, you know, hearing problems. So you want to protect yourself against uh, hearing uh, disabilities by using the correct hearing protection uh, equipment. So there is a table over there which tells you, you know, what is the uh, level of uh, noise and what type of uh, equipment or construction operation will get you to that level of noise. So you should be wearing um, ear protection to prevent getting, uh, you know, the, the typical problem is what I have. It's called tinnitus. It's uh, ringing in your ear. Uh, that does not stop. So it's really annoying, and uh, there is no cure for that. So try not to get it. It's really not pleasant. Okay, so... Hearing protective uh, devices should be provided whenever, you know, you have implemented work practices to minimize the level of uh, noise in the job site, but you still have, you know, people exposed to um, sound level of 90 dB, uh, decibels or more, then you should provide uh, ear protection. Here are pictures of some of the uh, hearing protection devices. Ear plugs, these are very common. It's just... Uh, a very soft material that you twist around, put it inside your ear, and then let it expand. So it protects you from very high noises. Then these are uh, caps that can go, you know, you can move up and down. They provide a, a less uh, protection than the earplug. And then there's uh, earmuffs that uh, provide good protection for the hearing and also the, the outside of the ear. So, as I said, sometimes you need to wear both of them, the earplugs and the earmuffs, to have a really good level of protection uh, with, when, you have, when you're exposed to high decibels. <coughs> Foot protection is also important. As he said, you know, in some companies you are required to wear uh, hard boots and have, uh, you know, uh, protection uh, against... Um, objects falling down into your feet or you st stepping on a nail or something, a hard uh, uh, object that can cause uh, foot injury. You have to be you know, aware of uh, hot and, and wet surfaces. Sometimes we have, uh, especially on the roofs, we have you know, uh, coats that are applied with heat, so those become really hot. You have to be careful with those uh, when, when you standing uh, nearby. Uh, nails, a lot of uh, people get injured with nails on, on job sites. You step on them and then uh, it goes through your 
through the sole of your uh, shoe, so that can cause um, problem. Anyone has that that experience before? Yes, you did. Yeah, not good. <laughs> So yeah, you you have to try to protect. Them. Were you wearing boots or just regular shoes? You was not prepared for that. Okay. Yeah. It happens. Okay. So it's important to to have uh, full protection. Sometimes you may need to have uh, electrically conductive uh, boots if you're working in an environment that uh, where there are explosives, so you don't want to have you know, uh, sparks that can initiate an explosion. Uh, what else? Sometimes you have uh, impact resistant uh, toes. Uh, they have uh, like a metal uh, cap on, 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 the, on the toes, so that will protect you a little bit more against uh, objects that may fall on your feet. Hand protection, we have gloves. Uh, they can be protecting you against uh, chemicals, uh, cuts, you know, fractures, depending on, on what type of uh, machinery you're operating, chemical exposures also. There are special gloves to handle uh, chemicals. So it's important to have the material data sheet on the different chemicals that you're using because they will tell you what type of gloves would be recommended to uh, handle those chemicals. There are different type of uh, gloves available, you know, uh, plastic, uh, fabric, chemical protective gloves, uh, rubber gloves. So depending on what type of job you're doing and what uh, exposure you have to different chemicals and materials, you should be wearing the appropriate uh, gloves. Here's some uh, example of uh, protections uh, against uh, petroleum products, nitrile or butyl against a uh, certain type of gas or um, water vapors against cuts and abrasions. You know, there's sometimes a stainless steel uh, mesh type of gloves that protects you from uh, cuts. Have anyone used any of one of those before? Those type of, uh, yeah, you had? I use the uh, every day. Okay. Because of the type of chemicals that you Work and yeah, okay, good, excellent. Uh, then there is body protection where you have the complete suit uh, to protect yourself and, and your clothes against uh, hazards. Intense heat, you know, radiation, that kind of uh, things you, you may be exposed to. So you need to have a full body uh, protection device. There is other type, you know, vests. Uh, we've seen them in the uh, in job sites where they have normally reflective materials so people can see. You know, uh, if, if you're over there at night, it will it will uh, reflect light and try to you know prevent an accident. Uh, cooling vests, full body suits. These are different types. Has anyone worked with a uh, full body suit uh, before? You probably had uh, with the chemicals, right? Yeah, specially designed for those. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it will, it will maintain some comfortable temperature, yeah. I can imagine that they will get really, really hot, uh, especially here in Florida, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it works. Right? It protects you against the chemicals that you will be exposed to, so that's, uh, that's good. The alternative is not so good. <laughs> Respirators, you know, if you're working in a hazard condition, a hazard atmosphere, you may need to have a respirator. I had a link over there to different type of respirators with pictures, so, well, uh, look at them at home. So we talked about these uh, different hazards in the workplace, you know, what is the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment to use, you know, make sure that you check uh, that uh, it's in good conditions and um, 
require employees to wear the uh, PPE. There are some fact sheets that are also available on the, on the website, so I encourage you to see them. I wanted to show a couple of videos in terms of signs and barricades. Uh, we've talked about this before, right? Uh, how to protect uh, people from getting into hazards on job site by uh, diverting traffic or diverting uh, walk, uh, you know, people who are wa walking. Um, I have the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices on, on the website, so please look at it. Uh, make sure that you at least uh, get somewhat familiar with them because if you are on a job site where you have to control traffic, you will be required to be, you know, familiar with those uh, regulations. So then I had a couple of uh, videos over there. We've talked before about signs. Uh, why are they important? Where are they used? They, I wanted to also mention that Sometimes the, there are other rules and regulations that are incorporated into OSHA by reference. So by reference means that they said so it's, uh, something like, like, for example, flagler signaling and flagglers and the use of flagglers, including warning garments worn by flagglers, shall conform to part uh, six of the manual of uniform traffic control devices. So they don't put that. Uh, regulation in here, but they make a reference to it, so it makes it mandatory under OSHA to comply with those um, uh, rules and regulations. So that's uh, an example for the main on uniform traffic control devices, and here's another one that uh, reference uh, an uh, ANSI standard for crane and uh, hoist uh, signals. So you have to be, you know, you have to follow those standards in order to comply with the OSHA regulations. Here's some uh, examples of uh, hand signals that people use when around cranes to lift, uh, you know, the loads, to stop the loads, to move it one side or another one, just to show, you know, different types of uh, signals. Here are different type of uh, cranes where you, you know, you may be moving loads. Uh, these are stationary. They're not so used at the job site, I think, because they will be, you know, limited to a, a, an area. We normally see those overhead cranes or the, the mobile type that are uh, more common. Here's another one uh, incorporated by reference in terms of barricades. They go back to that uh, manual of uniform traffic control devices. So you can see it's uh, highly used um, when it comes to signals and barricades and job sites. These definitions, we had them before. You know, what is a barricade? What are signs, signals, and tags? The difference between them. It's uh, kind of important, so I've uh, mentioned them before, I mentioned them now. You know, get familiar with what are the difference between them because they may come up in exams later on. And here's a video that I wanted to post and see if we can uh, discuss after the video some of the hazards that are present and some of the protections. But since we have no internet, we don't have to see it. So I will encourage you to see it at home, and then we'll discuss that uh, in another lecture. Any questions or comments? Nope. All right. So it's uh, quiz time.